welcome to June 25th, 2018. The last live Q&A for me in the first half of 2018. Still not sure if I'm streaming or not. I am. All right. Well, that was a very fun start there. We actually started streaming by accident as we were setting up for this. Some of you probably caught that, so sorry about that. Um, at least I wasn't saying things like, Sam's a jerk or Z's a doofus or something, right? Because <laughs> I, I never say these things. Um, all right. Same rules apply as always. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them in the live, uh, in, in the comments there. I don't answer everything, but I do answer a lot of questions, and so if you have anything to ask. But before we get into that, and I'm going to wait till there's a few more people, I'll answer a few questions, and then I'm going to show you guys something cool that no one else has seen yet. Uh, there we go. Really cool. You may notice here that I have two colors right now. Uh, we did a water thing yesterday uh, at, at our church. So I, I, I rented a big water slide for the kids. I was running a water slide. My kids were there. We did a water bloom battle and spray the leader, Tom Vassell. And we got paint. Oh, it was crazy. It was fun. And I was like, kids, make sure everyone gets on the, the sunscreen lotion. And I put it on everybody. And I, at the end of the day, I was like, I never put it on myself. So I'm paying for that a little bit now. Um, my arms are slightly red, and my neck is the same color, and the back of my legs are that also. But fortunately, I wore a shirt, and uh, for many reasons, actually. Uh, and also, I, I, it's not too bad. Uh, we got aloe plants growing in our backyard, so that's always nice. I broke off a leaf of those. And so it's not too bad. Mm, hurts just a bit. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Let's go to some questions before I show you my cool thing. Let's see. When is the Empire review? Is the review of Empires of the Void 2 still coming? Well, why would it not be? It's still in the queue. Um, what's the best micro game you've played? It's really hard to determine what exactly a micro game is. I really like that little worker placement one in the mint box. Mint works maybe it would be a good answer for that, but I'm not sure. There might be another one. Uh, do you like cannoli? I do like cannoli, um, but I don't love it. I think it's okay. I get it every once in a while, and every time I get it, I'm like, meh, I think I would have had, had one of the other desserts. Um, do you get paid for advertisements? We do. Should we avoid get hitting skip so you make more? Well, it's very, very small amounts of money, so that's up to you. I would never say don't hit skip. If you want to get to the video faster, hit skip. You know, do what you want to do. I really enjoyed the No Pun Included UK Expo show with your participation. Maybe a shout out to Dice Tower Public can watch this excellent show. It was an excellent show. Uh, Elaine did a, an amazing job. So if you want to watch that, it's on uh, No Pun Included channel. Yeah, the microphones could have been better, right? I think there was a lot of us sharing microphones. So you can't hear us all the time. But all you really need to do in this show is hear Elaine. She did a fantastic job singing and doing things. And it's fun. You can try to guess her clues themselves. It was very unique and interesting. And we had a really good time doing that. I'll probably do a shout out. I just saw that it went up this morning. Um... Why was there, I'm going to answer this because I, I, I feel like this is a baiting question, but I feel like I'm going to answer it anyway. Why was there just a single male in a harassment video? Not really equality. Well, I don't, see, here, here's my question in this regard. Why don't you get upset that there's not a female in all of our top tens? There's no equality there either. You know, why, why does that matter? I mean, we do back talks all the time where we talk about all sorts of big issues in the industry, and it's usually three guys. I think having... Four women and one guy on one video is not really a big deal in that regard, right? I mean, fair is fair. If you're going to call that out, call it out all the time. Um, how necessary do you consider the expansion for Kemet? Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about the... Here's the thing. If I was going to get one expansion for Kemet, I'd buy Cyclades and get the uh, C3K. Just have more monsters because that's the expansion I like the best. The expansion for Kemet's great. I like it a lot. I very rarely use the half of it, the priests and all that. I just use the black tiles a lot. I like having those extra tiles for people to choose from. Um, but I don't think it's, like, necessary. 
Did I hear you guys were doing a top 10 train games? Uh, yeah, that's actually going up tomorrow. It's on our audio show. Have you eaten from the concession stand at Dice Tower Con? Uh, a few times, but it's pretty pricey. So I usually go off because it's Orlando and there's a gazillion restaurants. Is there late registration for Dice Tower Con? Um, I don't believe there is. Uh, it's sold out, so I don't think you can get tickets. There's a waiting list to get on. But, you know, a lot of people have been asking for tickets, and, and, and I don't know what to say because we really had the registration open for so long. So next year, when the registration opens, I would get on that as soon as you could. Um, have you played Who Goes There yet? Yes, my review is going up this week. I do wonder why there are no females in the top ten. Well, because... And in that regard, my answer for that is because this is who we have here. We have me, Sam, and Z uh, recording our videos. Now, we're going to be doing a top five live at, the, um, at Dice Tower Con next week. And it's going to be me, Sam, Z, and then we're also adding Eric, Suzanne, and Mandy in to that. So hopefully that will help out in that regard. And if we ever get the chance to have more folks here, we will do so. Um... Have you tried any VR? I played VR once. Um, it's, it, was, it was fun, but I, I didn't sit around feeling like I had to play more of it, I guess. Uh, I heard about the VR Skyrim. That interests me, but also I think I don't know that I would go anywhere where there might be spiders. That would scare me half to death. Do you still feel Dragon Hole's a game? I feel like it's a single-player choose-your-own-adventure game. <laughs> I apologize. I'm, that's just a funny question because you said, do you still feel it's a game? I feel it's a single player choose your own adventure game. Sure. There you go. It's a game. doesn't matter if it's single player or not, right? Have you ever caught yourself alpha gaming? Yes. And what do you normally do when you catch yourself? I try to shut up for a while. It's really hard, right? And we all call each other out, all of us in our group, because there's so many alpha gamers. We call each other out for being an alpha gamer. Um, so that helps keep us on our toes. About to start Seafall with a group and your review and others have mentioned a problem of milestones being worth too much. Is there a fix we can try at the start like counting them for half? Uh, I would not do that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to begin on the, on, the, on the balancing of this game and I wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to know that I, I know how to fix it. Oh, oh I see. Okay, so Ryan clarified the late registration for Dice Tower Con. We have tickets, but won't be re arriving to the con until Friday. Trying to determine where we check in. There's a registration desk, so you can just come in and check there. I, I, I see. I'm sorry. Um, sure, we're excited about you coming, uh, but you just go to the desk at Friday and get them. Hi, I'm not an American, but uh, nor have I been to Essen. But would you say harassment is a very common problem at conventions there, or is it a very small but detestable problem that makes you very mad? I think it would be, it's a small problem, but it's, it's prevalent and it's not there. Last night, a lot of people were saying in the video, they were saying, I never see it. And, and that, that's legitimate, right? Maybe you haven't seen it. Maybe in your group it doesn't occur, but it definitely happens at conventions a lot, whether you see it or not. And if you don't see it, I think maybe it's time to say, well, maybe I should look to see if I do see it. Just because it doesn't happen to you doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Sure, it's not happening every minute all the time all over the place, but it happens enough so that it needed to be addressed. Favorite way to destroy something in a legacy game? I don't know that I like destroying stuff in legacy games. I mean, ripping up the card stuff. I like the adding of stuff more than destroying. Destroying, I mean, they're only, they're other than ripping things up, how else is there a way to destroy things? Putting a sticker on top of it? Let's see, are there any new movies that you're looking forward to seeing? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know that the Jurassic Park movie is getting a lot of pods or reviews, but I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it anyway. Incredibles, I'm looking for, I haven't seen that yet. And Ant-Man and Wasp, I'm really pumped about seeing. Uh, let's see here. How many people are watching now? A hundred people. I'm doing this too early. Well, you know what? For your hundred people, I got something for you. So I'm going to come back and, and, and answer uh, some questions in a bit, but you can still ask them. But next week is Dice Tower Con. 
So we're going to be talking about Dice Tower Con a lot over the next few days and so on because it's our main big con, right? We're pretty excited about it. 3,000 people gaming all week long. So I'm going to be talking about the different events that we're going to be doing there. Uh, like I already mentioned, we're doing a top five there. We'll also be doing... Uh, many other events, but the biggest event that we do there, or I'm trying to make it the biggest event, is the Dice Tower Awards, right? The Dice Tower Awards are going to be there. We're going to announce the Dice Tower Awards and give out trophies to the winner. Trophies! Well, see, last year uh, we gave out um, certificates to all the winners, which is cool, but I've been messing for a while around. I say, you know, I want to give out a trophy that means something that looks really good. Well, folks, here we go. I have this trophy here, now this one doesn't have the nameplate on it yet, um, but it's going to have the nameplate on it. This is the Dice Tower Trophy, and this thing is, it is a solid, pretty cool trophy. It's three-dimensional. Um, it's a, well, I mean, it's a little thinner maybe than a normal Dice Tower would be, but hopefully we're hoping that this really brings some extra gravitas to these awards, and it will tell you who wins each one on the bottom of them. So we're going to be announcing and handing these out live, um, and the good thing about these trophies, too, is, is that if it, once we hand out these trophies, we're going to give one to the publisher and to the designer, so we have extras of these to, to give out. I think we have... 40 or so of these to hand out to different folks at the Dice Tower Awards, so we're pretty pumped about that. So these are going to be next Thursday, and they're going to be streamed live, so you have a chance to watch them. I'm really, really excited about this. I think this is, obviously, it's just my opinion. I think this is the coolest award in the business right now and how it looks, but I also think the Dice Tower Awards are the best in the business because we have such a diverse amount of views going in and talking about them. Who won? There are currently... Four people who know the winners. I am one of those four. Um, but you'll have to wait and see next Thursday. We'll announce them. Let's see. Do you consider the ocean strategy for Dracula and Fury Tad broken? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not an expert on Fury or Dracula. Uh, let's see here. Do you dislike sunscreen? No! <laughs> I use it all the time. I'm, I'm extremely white. I need sunscreen down here in Florida. I just, I just totally forgot. I was so busy. I was running the water slide, so you can only let one kid on the water slide at a time, and they come down and, you know, make sure one. And I was watching the kiddie pools here, and I was telling the, I was just, I was like running this event. Do, go here, do this. Go here, do this. Go there, do this. And was done, I was like, ah, good. I looked at my arms, and I was like, wait a minute. They're turning red. <gasps> After yelling at all my kids to put sunscreen on, I didn't put it on myself. No! And my kids think this hilarious. Is Dice Tower taking on new advertisers? Sure, email us about it. Lots of people liking the trophy. Which one's for La La Land? <laughs> Do you communicate a lot when playing co-ops and discuss strategy and thus create kind of a hive mind? Yeah, maybe. Or do you decide all on your own? Well, I guess we do a hive mind thing to some degree. We're always talking. We talk the whole time. We're playing co-op games. Excuse me. How many dice can you get into the top of that trophy? These are the small dice, though, so I don't know if these count. So, one, two, three, four, five. Ah. Let's use some regular sided dice here. Some regular sized dice, not sided. Uh, looks like I can fit seven. Seven into there. But it's not actually a dice tower. That would have been maybe a little bit too hard to pull off. How likely is it that On the Underground was on your top 10 train game list? Well, I guess you'll have to listen tomorrow and find out. We'll be posting that tomorrow morning. Did you consider trying to make the trophy a functional dice tower? Sure. We, my initial thing was to make something like this and just make it into a, an award. But this just looks a little classier. And I, it's also our logo. I really like how it, it looks like our logo and everything. So I'm very, again, and it, I don't know, this just looks good on the shelf, I think. So I'm, I'm really hoping that people like these awards and, and show them off. That's exciting to me. Are you excited for Founders of Gloomhaven? Sure. 
Thoughts on the Light Seekers collectible card game? Well, I haven't played it yet, although it's really high on my list. Like, the chance of me playing Light Seekers CCG this week is very high. We have it at home. Me and Melody are probably going to be playing it. How many fedoras do you own? I don't know. 10? 15? Not, I mean, well, maybe less than that. What's the most interesting ingredient you have had in a salad and ended up liking it? Um, wow. I don't even know how to respond to that. I, um, I've had a lot of interesting things in salads. I didn't think I would like cherries in salads, but I found that those are really good. Um, I put all kinds of stuff in salad. <laughs> um, all right. When can we expect a review for Rise of Fenris? Well, when I'm done with it. It's a campaign style game. It's for Scythe. And so I, there's also an embargo on it, too. So um, with all those things together, it's going to be a bit before we get through this one. Um, and I want to make sure I do a good job on it. So that's that. Am I caught up on questions? There's not enough people watching now. Let's see here. There we go. Do you like sweet meat or savory meat better? Savory, for sure. Are you in favor of discarding inserts so that you can fit as much expansions in one box as possible? For sure. I'd rather have stuff in a box than have a nice uh, insert. I like nice inserts, don't get me wrong, but I would rather have everything in one box. What's the most amount of shirts you've had on simultaneously? I don't know, like 20? <laughs> it was like for like a party game, right? Okay, so if you're not talking about like some silly game where you put shirts on people. Um, well, when I used to live in cold weather, I would wear a t-shirt and a shirt over that. Maybe four, maybe at the most ever. Nowadays, I almost always wear two shirts. I like wearing t-shirts. And then I just wear a colored shirt over them. Do you eat any Cuban or Cuban-inspired food in Florida? I do. What do you like? The thing I like the best, chop chop chicken. What is required to paint your own miniatures? Paint and brushes? Can anyone do it? Sure. Can anyone do it well? You didn't ask that question, but I can tell you that. Probably not, but you can probably practice at it. Will you bring Dice Tower t-shirts to Essen? No, we're very hampered by the amount of things we can bring to Essen, so no. Is a rematch scheduled for Looping Louie at Dice Tower Con? It is! Um, and this is one of the things, I'll be make, like I said, I'm going to be making a video of like, here's what's coming out at Dice Tower Con. Um, so, me and Bonacor played Looping Louie at uh, Geekway to the West, and he whooped me. So, I'm going to have a rematch with him, and the loser gets a pie in their face. We will record it. I'm on during two World Cup matches. Well, there you go. Did not know that. Meh, it is what it is. Do you know Florida has a specific style of pizza like Chicago or New York style? No. The pizza down here is either Chicago or New York style for the most part. I know you keep your collection pretty slim. How many new games do you add to it each year? I don't know. I've never really kept track of that. Remembering when I add a game, I get rid of one. So there's a lot of games that we're getting rid of. You know, Kenny was just talking to me because we've been sending our games, the games that we're getting rid of, up to Dice Tower Con. And he said, how many games do you think we sent? I said, yeah, probably a couple hundred. He's like 650 or something like that. I was like, wow, a lot of games have gone through the Dice Tower. Do you have any tips for teaching very complex games? I don't know why I answered that question, why I read that one out loud, because it's a, that's a whole video in of itself. Just watch other people teach games. Teach the, what you need to do, where you're going, what's the end goal of the game, and then work from there. Um, if you could go, ooh, I like this question. If you go back in time and see any of the seven wonders of the ancient world, what would you pick? All right, well, let me uh, pull these up just so I don't miss one. Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. Okay. Well, the Great Pyramids are still around, so I'm going to cross that one off because I can go still see that one now. Hanging Gardens, Colossus at Rhodes, Lighthouse of Alexandria, Temple of Artemis, Statue of Zeus at Olympia, and Mausoleum. 
Hmm. I'm going to drop the mausoleum and the temple of Artemis. I'm sure they're both great. I like I like big stuff, right? I like tall stuff. The, the, the Colossus of Rhodes is a tempting one because I would love to see that huge statue. That'd just be a neat thing. Same thing with the lighthouse, right? Those are just both really neat things. Same thing with the statue of Zeus. Um, hmm. But I think I'm going to scratch all three of those. I think I'm going to go with the Hanging Gardens. I think the Hanging Gardens would be neat. I'd like to see Babylon anyway as a whole. So I would like to, the Hanging Gardens, I think, would be my choice. Ah, that was a fun question. Let's see here. What YouTube channel did you just subscribe to? I didn't. Um, have you ever played Tabletop Simulator in Steam? Uh, yes. Um, do you think people should be allowed to play licensed games for free on it like they do? I don't know what you mean by that. If the company allows it, sure. If the company doesn't want people doing it, then I'm not sure it should be legalized. If you were on a six-person, two-year mission to Mars, what one board game would you take? <laughs> uh, <laughs> two years, huh? Um, yeah, it all depends on how much room they would let me take, right? A compact game that you could play over and over and over and over again? Dungeons and Dragons? Probably. Well, you lose on purpose so you can get the pie. No. No pie is worth losing the Bonacore over. Um, are you live streaming from Dice Tower Con? Sure. And we'll be setting up those streams soon, actually, so you'll be able to see when each one is. Is there a smaller convention that you've heard of or you'd like to consider going to? Seems like new game conventions are popping up all the time. No, there's always small conventions. I would always be glad to go to any small convention, right? You know, there's no real, like, ooh, that's a neat one. It would depend, like, ooh, that's an estate I haven't been to yet. I'd like to go there. I guess that's how it would be. Have you played any of the new Unlock or Exit games yet? I played the Exit ones, and our review for that goes up tomorrow. Me and Melody will be doing those. Um... How can I send it for two rooms and a boom at this hour kind? I think you can just go find the area and, and play. I'm sure they'll keep playing it over and over and over again. Are there gaming terms that are different in England or other countries? That's interesting because there's a lot of different words in English that are very different than what we use in America. Like they'll say lift, we say elevator, boot or trunk, and um, you know, there's just different words for various things, right? But gaming terms, I think they're the same, but I don't... I didn't run across any. I was like, what? You say that? If all the practical and logistical problems went away and you could hold a Dice Tower Con in any city, which city would you hold it in? Orlando, Florida. How do you feel about being addressed as Tommy? No, nah, I'm not a big fan of it. I was called Tommy my whole childhood. So when I went to college, I said, I'm going to change this. I'm going to be. Uh, so I told everyone there was Tom. I came back home. And the people at my church, my parents still call me Tommy, and I convinced them all to change as time went by. Some of them probably, if they met me today, would probably still call me Tommy, maybe? I don't know. My parents call me Tom, though. I pushed them a little bit on that one. Um, my wife calls me Tommy. And I think there's like one other person who might call me that, but for the most part, people call me Tom. I guess you could call me Tommy, and I wouldn't like start a fight over it. But it just, I don't know, then maybe I'll figure out your name and make some kind of nickname up for it, maybe. I don't know. Tom, can you still have fun playing games or are you always reviewing them deep inside? Yes. My favorite color Magic Gathering deck, green. Do you have any thoughts on Monolith only making games that will be Kickstarter exclusive and not available in retail? That's the way of the future, right? Uh, I don't know that a game has to be available in retail. Uh, other games have not been available in retail, Max vs. Minions, um, and other things. I mean, and if that's the way they decide to distribute it and they found that way to be a case, you know, what, what, what am I going to say? Um, it's just the way of the future. I, I don't know that retails deserve every game, you know, like they deserve to have a copy in their store. If I owned a company, I would probably want to put a copy in the store. Um, 
as many as out there, but maybe this is what works for them. I'd be cautious on saying it's, it's a bad move. Do you think there's enough interest to sell Dice Tower Cruise polo shirt for those attending? Maybe we'll, we'll look into that. Mm. Have you tried the video game Overcooked? I've not. I hope those exit reviews are spoiler free. Well, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do spoilers for most of the exit things, but I'm just going to do them in groups. Like, there's no reason for me to. There was, there's two new exit games. There's no reason for me to do those separately. We're just going to put them together. Just like the three new unlock games, I'm not going to do those separately. I'm just going to do them all together as one review. The other day I played Trivia Pursuit from 1981. Four of the answers were President Reagan, and we didn't know any. Have you ever played been stumped by an old trivia game? Sure. I get stumped by new trivia games. I, I, old ones I'd probably do better at, I think. I'm going to Korea next year. Is there a place to go concerning games? I actually don't know off the top of my head, but I, there's a big active Korean. I mean, it's been a while since I've been there. But there's board game cafes. There's board game groups there. Just search it on the Internet. I'm sure you'll find it. How far are you planning the Dice Tower cruise? Well, I mean, it's in January, so it's like seven months. But we start planning the next one after we finish one. And will they always be leaving from Florida? I won't promise that they'll always be leaving Florida, but there will probably always be one that's leaving from Florida. Favorite country you've ever visited? Malaysia. Um... I'm confused about Rise of Queensdale. Are there any tuck boxes or mystery components? So Queensdale, basically, it comes with bags of components, and there are stickers, tons and tons and tons of stickers, and rules and things. And it's not that they're mystery, just you kind of like don't look at them. You know, or there's tiles and things that are banded together. Just search room and find them. Nothing really like, there's no tuck boxes, which is a little disappointing, I guess, because that tuck box has that mystery, like what's in there? But they are able to fit a lot more in the box because of this. With the possible Disney Fox deal, are you hopeful that a Deadpool or Wolverine will be in a future Avengers movie? I don't know about Deadpool, but Wolverine would be cool. Seeing a new Fantastic Four done by the Marvel uh, Universe. You said possible Disney Fox. I thought I just saw that that was signed for sure, but I might be wrong. Do you have any suggestions for an escape room in the Orlando area? I don't, but I would ask other people who have gone to Dice Tower Con. A lot of, there's a lot of escape rooms in the area, and many of them people have done. Dice Tower Cruise Ship Takeover. You talked a while about the possibility of taking the whole ship over. Is that still a possibility? Um... Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility, but there's a lot of problems to getting there. Let me, hang on, this is a, let me prepare for your question. Okay, so first of all, the problem is you can't do half a ship. If you get to half a ship, you have to do a whole ship. So right now we've done, what was our first cruise? It was just under 300, then last year 400, and I think now we're at 500. We're like slowly expanding the number of people who are coming on the cruise. And I'm perfectly fine with that. It was, it was fine, but we have to be careful. We have to make sure there's room for people to play games. Jason works really hard in that, but we have to kind of twist the cruise to, to let's do that. So for us to go to a thousand is not really possible because we would need to get like a whole dining room where we could play games all day. So the cruise, the cruise ship is 3,000. So if I knew I could get 3,000 people to come on a cruise, I'd do it in a heartbeat. But if I couldn't get that many people, then I'm going to be out a ton of money. Any news or events coming out of the Jack Bass Memorial Fund? Well, we're doing a, a live auction for them at the Dice Tower Con, and we'll be uh, posting that one. Do you think that kids' games are hitting their golden age? Oh, yeah, for sure. With Magic Maze Kids, My Little Side, and Stuff Fables, I'm already 
willing to call 2018 the best year for kids gaming ever so far, just on the base of those three games alone. They are that good of games. Um, I do not think Table P1 is going to make a uh, uh, appearance this year. I'm not sure at Dice Tower Con. Yeah, me and Eric are going to do a top 10 family games at some point. Like games we like to play with our families, very specifically. Um, uh, rather than just saying these are the top 10 family games, we want to say these are the top 10 our family games. So yeah, that's probably a top 10 list you're going to see from us very soon. What's your favorite strategy game with a common board in the center? <laughs> There's so many of those. It seems a lot of games have a player board instead of or in addition to the central board. Yeah, sure, but I'm, uh, th th that's almost too much work for me to try to figure that now. There's so many great games. I would just, I mean, again, when you ask a question like that, you could literally go to my top 100 and just go down until you found one that fit that category. I like having my own player board anyway. Do you back other things on Kickstarter other than board game related stuff? Oh, yes. That's mostly all I back on Kickstarter. I back a few board games. I look for hot sauces, beef jerky, weird toys, gadget things. Do you prefer playing a full interaction game or a full strategy game? I don't know what that means. Uh, no nasty water today, no, but I found out that I'm the only person in the studio who doesn't like that stuff. S Sam and Derek tend to like it. Are you going to eat your hat now? No, I never actually said I was going to eat my hat. I like my hats. First time interacting with Dice Tower on live. Why do you keep skipping my questions? I think it's a normal question. Is it if it's inconvenient to make a recommendation between you two, you can just tell me. Oh, I don't answer, you know, number one, I don't answer all questions, although I answered this one. Um, but I don't, I don't normally answer, should I get this or this? That's not my thing, right? I, I have, I do reviews on both these games. The reason I don't answer a question when someone says, should I get this or this, is because I don't know you. I don't know your gaming tastes. And I feel like it's your choice to make. I have given a lot of information. Most time when someone says, should I get one of these two games? I have reviewed both those games. So watch those reviews and then use that information to say which of these would I like for myself. But I, as a general rule, don't answer those questions usually because that's, if you know which one I like better because you can see which one's in my top 100 or not. But I, I don't think you should go by which one I like better because you're not me. So that's why I don't answer those questions. How do you stay positive in an online environment where online is known to be a negative force? Well, i not always positive. <laughs> but also, uh, hanging out with people in real life helps out a lot. Favorite sushi? You know, a long time ago in Korea, I once had a sushi with peanut butter, and I've never forgotten that. Um, uh, I, I will say this. I like sushi rolls the best. I, I know that there's, there's a, I find it interesting, like there's a lot of people who talk about sushi and the sushi rolls are not sushi. I went to a, a place in California one time and it was, they were like on a sign, do not ask for sushi rolls. That's not actual real sushi. I'm like, oh, okay, but I really like it. I love those sushi rolls. They're fantastic. Um, I always tend to get one that I haven't had before, try a new one. Um, I like ones with fruit in for whatever reason um, and cream cheese. I like those. Uh, dragon roll, crab, lobster rolls are really good, but that's because I'm a huge fan of lobster. What's the most recent game you played today? I don't think I played a game today yet. It's only 10 a.m. I've, uh, I've done a lot of video work today, but I haven't played any board games today. Did I play my Crashlands game? No. Someone's asked, like, what Switch games you're playing lately? I've kind of flip-flopped and I've been playing on the uh, iPad for a while. I downloaded a game called Crashlands, which is similar to Terraria or Minecraft, I guess, maybe closer to Terraria. And you just go around and you fight things, get better weapons, and fight things, get better weapons. I'm just having a blast. I'm sure I'll get bored with it once I beat the game, but for now, I would say I'm about halfway through and I've been just really enjoying it.
Your portable microphone has changed over the years. What model of the mic are you using now? This is a Sure mic, I know that. It's a QLX-D1. And I love these mics a lot. They work really well. Mario or Sonic? I'm more of a Mario fan. Sam just reviewed Big Trouble in Little China. I did not play it, he, he played it. Have you ever considered doing a top three games for different age groups, like starting at age three and going up? I've thought about that. I'm always worried about that because kids are so different. My son, who's four years old, is very different than Melody was when she was four years old. I could have played all sorts of very complex games with her. With him, I would not be able to do that at this point in time, but things will change. That's okay. Uh, kids are very, very different at different ages, so I would be very cautious about doing that. Your sunburn hurts me? It shouldn't hurt you. It's just me. Ah, now it hurts me, too. Um... That was kind of a dumb thing to do. Oh. That's okay. It's only right now. It's only my arms that hurt, and my neck, and the back of my legs. My ears don't. Well, they didn't hurt. Um, yeah, that's it. But I got aloe. When I'm done with this, I'll probably put some aloe on. Will you be accepting Mark Swanson's challenge to play feuding with him in the near future? Actually, I talked to Mark about that. And uh, because he, he emailed me and, and very nicely and very graciously offered to play it with me at Dice Tower Con. But I said no to him, and, and I'll, I'll say, I'll, I'll tell you, I, and I'll tell you what I told him why. Uh, there's a couple reasons. One, I'm very cautious to accept challenges from designers on this because if I accept a, something from a designer, I'm going to be accepting that from every designer, right? It's going to happen over and over and over and over and over again, especially if the, if the review is negative. And it's happened before. And some who I've really trashed the game have almost like said, I'm going to play the game with them. Not so. Mark was very, very polite and fantastic about it. But some, some publishers have not been. Usually very small, independent publishers. They did one game. I said, this game's horrible. They're like, next time we're at a convention, I will teach you this game. Well, no, no thanks. Secondly, here's the deal. And this, this is going to sound maybe weird, but this is just a life thing that I do. I don't play games I don't like. You know, I play them to review them, but when I'm done, if I don't like a game, or even if I like it a little, but it's okay, I don't play them. Why? Because there's 10,000 plus games out there. There's always new games. I like to play new games. And if I'm not playing new games, then I want to play games that I like. And I find that I enjoy life more that way. So, sure, I play a lot of games I don't like, the new ones, but I'm not going to go out of my way to play games I don't like. You say, but that's not nice to other people. They might like that game. Well, then I'm sure they can find someone that, they, that also likes the game that they can play it with. Um, by the way, I'm taking out of this equation like games with my kids that I, I might not be a big fan of, but they love. Right? That's different. Um, but for like with other people, if you, don't, if you love this game and I don't like it, I'm sure there's something we both like. I have yet to meet anyone in my life who I don't, we have nothing in common. There's going to be some game that we can play between the two of us. But... Life is not that long, right? And I don't want to waste it playing things I don't like or things that I'm like, meh, about. And that sounds mean, right? It sounds like, well, you should give more chances. No, I don't want to give more chances. Let other people give it a chance, right? I would rather go on to new things and or back to games that I love a lot. And that way, when you come to me and I say, hey, I'm bringing this game that I've already played before and I like it, you know that I really like it. And so that, but, but it's mostly just because if I say yes to any of these challenges, I'm going to be, that's all I'm ever going to get. I'm going to go to conventions. And then it's going to be like, wow, that convention's not fun. Six people want me to play a game that I gave a negative review to with them. Eh. By the way, I didn't hate Feudum anyway. Um, and I think a lot of people will love it. And Mark is a real stand-up guy. So if that game looks even slightly interesting, you should get it. That was a long... Uh, that was a long uh, answer to that one. Okay, Tom, before getting to Dice Tower Headquarters, how'd you stay motivated all the time working from home? It's my business. It's my thing. I'm always motivated about it. Sure, I mean, you can get distracted doing stuff. I can get distracted here at work and all, but I work hard at home. I still do a lot of Dice Tower stuff from home. Any news on Teeth Tosh and coming to the U.S.? For sure. It's called Good Critters. It's being released. 
at Gen Con. There will be an early preview copy of it at Dice Tower Con. If you find me with that game, maybe you'll have a chance to play it. But yeah, it's coming, baby, and you're going to like it. What is today's beverage of choice? It is blueberry lemonade from Bai. Uh, I don't think I like this as much as their just straight blueberry drink or their mango drinks, but I found that Bai across the board, I tend to like their stuff. I'm not a big coconut fan, but even their coconut waters, I've, I've enjoyed them. What dexterity type game are you best at? Flicking, throwing, stacking, balancing. Not balancing, not stacking, not throwing, so I'm gonna have to go with flicking. Do you feel Settlers of Catan gets as much credit as it should for the board game resurgence in the U.S.? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that. I mean, it gets a lot of credit. I think it should get credit. Whenever people ask me why is gaming so big, and I think that there are four very distinct things. There's Dungeons and Dragons, Magic the Gathering, Catan, and the Internet. Those four things. Now, as time has gone by, those are the four things in the 90s that caused, oh my, Dungeons and Dragons was obviously earlier than that, right? So, the, so Dungeons and Dragons kind of set the stage. But in the 90s, we had these three things happen at the same time. Magic the Gathering and Catan, Settlers of Catan came out, and the internet, which was already out a little bit, but became this big thing. All that happening at the same time caused board gaming to explode, and it kept going. Now, you can talk about other things that have increased the hobby, tabletop, uh, Kickstarter, um, YouTube, um, and other things have helped grow the hobby. Board Game Geek certainly helped grow the hobby. There's a lot of different things. Um, the Ticket to Ride, maybe. The, I don't know if I had the same kind of... I mean, Ticket to Ride has had a huge impact, but not the same impact Catan has had. Is Melody packed and ready to go? Uh, she's not leaving until August, so let's not push it. Come on, man. Um, but we're getting back to go to Dice Tower Con. Do you still talk with the chief or the ham tag guys? Well, I didn't really know the other two guys that well. Um, I talk to the chief every once in a while. We don't really cross anymore because the one convention that we both went to was Board Game Geek Con, and I, and I don't go there as much anymore, so I haven't seen him. By the way, if you're just popping in now, have you seen our new Dice Tower Award trophies? They're amazing! Whoa! Let's see here. Do you keep the components to a finished legacy game? Nah, I get rid of the game usually. I might keep some of the components I think are really cool. What new Dice Tower Essentials are coming out? Well, Critical Mass was released at Origins. It will be continued to be released at Dice Tower Con and then moving on to um, Gen Con. And then, of course, uh, uh, Good Critters, which is the re implementation of Teeth Tashin. Is there any particular reason you aren't fond of cats? Oh, <laughs> the Tom hates cats stick that I do all the time. Eh, not really. I've always thought my grandmother was a cat, a cat woman, uh, a cat lady, I guess. A cat woman's a superhero. Um, a super, not hero. Anyway, um, she had tons of cats all over her house all the time. She would take in strays, and I would go to her house and she had all dolls everywhere, kind of creepy too, right? So, so we'd always go to her house and sit in the living room and watch TV and uh, sometimes go to the bathroom and there'd be cats just looking at me and looking at me from things. And that did not make me fond of cats. My parents weren't big cat people either. We had dogs growing up, so there's that. So the dogs, so I, I guess that's what it is. But I mean, it basically is I just, I, I like a creature that reciprocates itself reciprocates the love you give to it. And I know, every time I mention this, a gazillion people's like, but my cat does. Sure, I don't believe it. Because um, every cat is special. But I don't really hate cats. I, it's more of a shtick I do. So I always, you know, I'm driving down the road, my kids are like, a cat's running across the road, and my kids are like, don't hit the cat. I'm like, why would you think I would hit the cat? I wouldn't go out of my way to hit a cat. I would go out of my way to avoid hitting a cat. And kittens are cute. We, I think we can all agree on that. But I don't know. It's no big deal. If someone has a cat, I'll, I'll laugh about it. But I mean, I wouldn't, like when no one's looking, I don't slap cats. But I do look at them and they look at me and we know. We know. Uh, 
what Marvel storyline would you like to see adapted to cinema? Perhaps House of M. Well, I'd like to see Age of Apocalypse. I think that'd be cool. I'd like to see, um, I would have said Civil War, but they did Civil War. They didn't do it as well as the comics. Um, World War Hulk, maybe, like Hulk coming back. To, bah, but Hulk did come, yeah, so it's kind of weird. I don't think they can even fit that one in the cinematic universe. So after Infinity Gauntlet, what would I like to see next? Um... Maybe Original Sin. That'd be an interesting one. Uh, I'm trying to take out the X-Men ones for now because there's a lot of great X-Men ones that are out there. Um, Avengers vs. X-Men. <laughs> I would certainly like to see that one. Do you drink water? Swapping these sugary drinks for water is a simple way to help watch your weight and stay healthy. Sure, I drink water. Drink water all the time. There's a perfect place for that trophy on the shelf behind me. Ah, uh, that shelf is a little, it's not that strong, that shelf. So then this is actually pretty heavy. So maybe I'll just put it here and randomly talk. If I put it here, let's see, if I put it right there, people will think it's a logo superimposed over the video. Can I use a trophy to hold a Hot Pocket? Yeah, it seems like a reasonable thing. Was a trophy made out of plastic? No, it feels like... feels like wood, actually. They're really nice trophies. By the way, these trophies are from Panda Manufacturing. They make a lot of great games that you may have played before. So Panda is the official sponsor of Dice Tower Awards, and they made these fantastic trophies from us. Check them out and their games. If you hadn't eaten yet today, would it be breakfast or lunchtime? Well, it's almost lunch. Uh, we're about to get to 11, and I often eat lunch at 11. Um, but um, I eat breakfast when I first get up. I get up at 6, and I usually eat breakfast around 6.30. So today I had some yogurt and tea. That was my breakfast. Yogurt with fruit and granola in it, of course, because just plain yogurt is boring. Tom, what's your opinion on new games that offer nothing new to the industry, like Gaia Project or Feast for Odin? I don't know. Are they fun? Then I like playing them. Uh, hey, I'm coming to Star Cruise from Australia. What should I be looking forward to the most? And is there any games to, for sale? Love the show. Well, first of all, you should be looking forward to just the whole thing in general. Just a fantastic time. Uh, I love the cruise. It's a um, great time. Will there be games for sale? I mean, I guess you could buy games beforehand. We don't sell games on the cruise itself because the, there's, there's a lot of legalities in the selling stuff on the ship. But, um, yeah, uh, just the spending time with the other people. It's very, very laid back, friendly. You'll get to know uh, lots of people on the cruise. There's always a kerfuffle about the rating system at BGG. Do you think it can be improved? Perhaps just make it between one and two metallic colossus arms up. Yeah, there's always going to be a kerfuffle about rating systems. Whatever, it's one to ten. Rank a game from one to ten. Ten is the best. One is the worst. It seems easy to me. <laughs> when did you get that logo superimposed on this video? Yeah, uh, Derek, Derek was able to do it. See, he just made it move, too. Are you ever going to do a making a video about how you and your friends developed the idea for and made nothing personal? Maybe, but I would not expect to see something like that for 10 years for several reasons. You wake up at 6. What time do you sleep? I go to bed at midnight. I set up a little bit extra last night because it was a live video, but as soon as that video was done, boom, I went to bed. But I wake up pretty much at 6 on the dot. Occasionally, like this morning, I woke up at 5.47, and I was like, meh, I'm up, I'll get up. It takes me, you know, maybe 10 or 15 minutes to kind of fully wake up. And then once I get that hot tea and, and my breakfast, and then I'm working until the kids get up, and then boom, boom, boom. I try to be at the studio by 8 each day, so I think I was here like at 8.02 today. I was a little bit late. And then I try to get as much stuff done before the other guys show up because they show up at 9. So I recorded a few reviews. I've done three reviews today, did some unboxing stuff. I got two more reviews I'm looking at over there, and then I got some, I'm working on Dice Tower Con all week, basically.
Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Will we do an updated list of top 10 video, uh, top 10 deck builders? Sure. I usually wait a few years before we update a top 10 list. Have you seen the Cloak and Dagger show yet? No, I haven't. Is that out? It probably is. Top 10 Jack Vass with Memorial Fund Assistance Stories. Names change for anonymity, good or bad idea. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but I'll tell you what. We are consistently helping people. I've had people come up and talk to me at conventions and say you were able to help us, and I really appreciate that a lot. That's a big deal for me, and I'm always really thrilled when I can meet the people that we help. Um, but we, we help people on a consistent basis, and I'm pretty excited. We just brought a few new people onto the board um, that are going to help make this thing run even more smoothly. What are the toughest decisions the Dice Tower makes on a daily basis? I don't know about toughest. Um, what games to review? No, I usually I schedule my games out to review. Uh, I schedule out a whole month or a block of time at a time. Like I think I schedule out the whole next six weeks. I schedule out this is what's going on. These are the videos that are being done, and it's it's kind of a little sketchy as as time gets by. Like each week, like I know all the reviews that are going up this week and a few that are going to go up next week during Dice Tower Con. Um, I know all the reviews that are going up during that time frame. But for the most part, um, so that's, those are decisions that are made, but they're made ahead of time. Um, what was the other thing? You know, like, oh, what's for lunch? No, I usually know going into a day what's for lunch. Why didn't Miami Dice Gizmos get a numerical rating on the website? I don't know why it didn't, but it's an eight. Is there any of you Magnificent Three fluent in Spanish? Uh, yes, Z is. That's it. Um... If you did a top 10 deck builder game, would well, that include Dice Masters and the Bag Builder? I would, at this point, I think I'll put Bag Builders as their own separate thing. If you could press a button and make any new type of recurring weekly show for the Dice Hour, what would you most like to add? Guess what? I actually control that. I have a button. It's this one right here. Dun, 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 dun. No, but seriously, if I think of a new show and I really like it, I'll add it. Or I'm planning to add it. Do you use any software to plan your content creation release schedule? No, I actually uh, I use Google Docs. Is board gaming a sport? I don't think so. Can you rank your top three favorite places to get ice cream? Jenny's is excellent ice cream. That's my number one. Number two, when I went to Minneapolis, there was some little ice cream place that Brian from Fantasy Flight took me to, and I don't remember the name of it, but that was very, very good. And then after that, man, I've had so many good ice creams in my life at various places. I, I'm, I'm hesitant to say my number three because I'm forgetting something. Maybe the, I don't know, but if you're talking about just a regular place like Chain, I usually go to Dairy Queen, actually. I know that Cold Stone's better, but I kind of like the blizzards at Dairy Queen. I just like putting those together. I've been eating a lot more frozen yogurt these days, anyway. Who mostly edits and uploads all your videos to YouTube? We do it as a team, but most of my videos are done by Derek. Sam and Z upload their own, and I edit a few of my own. Would Dice Star ever take young interns? Sure. But you'd have to apply, I guess, and say, hey, I want to be an intern for Dice Tower. I'd be like, sure. Do you live around us? I mean, I guess that's how it would be. But sure, I could always use interns. I, my, my daughters work as interns. How different is the culture from South Korea from the USA? Well, it's different in many, many ways. Uh, one of the biggest ways is that there's a sense of unity. Um, I, I've noticed that Americans are almost shy these days about saying, like, I'm proud to be an American. Um, and it's kind of weird to me that a lot of the world looks at America many times and says, don't be proud, you know. I'm not trying to get in politics. I'm just saying, you know, this nationalistic thing. But Korea is very nationalistic. They're very proud of, of, their, of their culture. And um, they're very uh, group-oriented. Like, you go and, like, if I order a piece of cake at a restaurant and they're going to bring me three forks. And I'm like, why, why are there three forks? I'm not sharing this piece of cake with anybody. 
you know that but it's very very much of sharing getting together group while america we got the i'm an army of one type of thing solo clint eastwood you know one guy versus the world korea is not like that korea is more group oriented there's a lot a lot of other differences between the cultures Is there any significance to the checker pattern on the wall? Oh, you mean this pattern here? That is the Jack Vassal Memorial Fund um, logo. So you can find more about that at jackvassal.org. Do you have any plans to visit Utah in the near future? I don't have any plans, no. Do you think superhero movies use too much CGI? I don't, I don't know. I like CGI most part. People always yell, yell, yell about CGI movies. I'm like, I like seeing spaceships blow up stuff and giant monsters. Sure, I'm not a big fan of when CGI doesn't look great, but if it works, I'm okay with it. I don't know why people are always like, die so much CGI in that movie. I'm like, man, as a kid, I wish they had, we had CGI that great. Go back and watch some of these movies. You know, uh, like Willow and stuff that didn't use any CGI. And tell me you wouldn't have minded if that monster, that Mad, uh, that, um, mad Mannequin had to fight at that one castle. That, that might not have looked better as CGI. All right, we're almost to the end here. Let's see a few more things. What game do you want to play right now? Um, SEAL Team Flicks. Uh, what food tempts you the most? Ice cream, probably. Uh, if you're talking about non-foods, tacos. Which felt more foreign, Toronto or Birmingham? Birmingham, actually, I, I would say, I think. Could Rising Sun and Blood Rage do a crossover with monsters like Cyclades and Kemet did? I guess they could, but it wouldn't make a lot of thematic sense. All right. The problem with CGI is you only notice it when it's bad. Sure, I guess. But, like, I think some old movies, like Jurassic Park, still holds up pretty well. And that movie's, what, 23 years old or something like that? All right. Well, I guess this might be the last time I do a Q&A at 10 in the morning, right? Or maybe I should always do them then, because then I can keep up with the questions. What's better, chicken or beef? <laughs> I don't know. I like chicken better myself. Ah, oh, beef occasionally. Woo. Hmm. Let's see. Well, folks, it looks like I am caught up on questions. Something very weird, but it's been done. All right, so keep an eye out this week for other things that are coming out. Um, we're going to have reviews. I'm doing. I'm going to try to do 18 reviews this week. Um, seems like it's something I can do. It will be smaller games, so don't give me. It's not like wow, 18. No, there's going to be some small games in that pile that get reviewed. But I'm clearing out my review queue. But I'm doing some bigger reviews this week. I'm going to be talking about who goes there. I'll be talking about uh, Journey uh, Through Osiris. I'll be taking a look at. Critical Mass and Reef and Legendary Creatures. So some, some pretty cool games that will be coming out, you know, that we'll be talking about this week. Or not. We'll have to wait and see. And then, of course, there's other videos. So keep an eye out for all those videos. So that's that, folks. There won't always be a World Cup match going on, says someone, and that's probably right. That's okay. Maybe some of those people will watch this later. But until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the live Q&A here at the Dice Tower. It's the Dice Tower Championships! Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we have here two teams. Today we're going to be taking the... This is the trophy, we'll get this out of the way. Today we will first have the rainbow sparkly colored poly dice here a few six sided 12s 20s 
tens and fours. And then over here, we have a giant group of blue dice. We're going to do a quick count here because there are some people saying that there are more of these blue dice, but this is part of the competition. Can more dice beat fewer dice? Uh, but these are only six-sided. Do they even have a chance? A six-sided can beat a 20-sided dice. It only takes a small thing. So we got 30, 40, fifty, sixty-five dice over here against five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-five, thirty-six. So there's no, not quite double the amount, but here we go. We're going to go through the first round elimination phase. Let's see what happens here. All right. Six to three. All right. Well, that's not looking good already. Four to four. Both eliminated. Oh, even the four sided are done. All right. Let me uh, move these over here. Eliminate dice. Go there. Which one? Here it is. So, so far, not a single blue die has made it yet. We have two to three. Oh, no, one of the poly, one of these dice are gone. Now we have four to two, a four-sided beat out one. Everyone's very pleased about that. Seven to one, get out of here. So far, it's not looking good for the non-poly dice here. Eight to three. I think I'm going to do it like this so I can grab these easier. So here we go. 11 to 5. <laughs> so far. 10 to 6. Nice try there with that 6. But it wasn't happening. 3 to 10. Uh, I'm going to put the dead pile here just because it's faster to get to. 3 to 2. Woo that was close, but still dead. All right, let's try this one. Four to one. You know, the six sided would probably do better if they would actually roll higher, considering how badly these guys are. Six to five. A 12 sided die has been eliminated. A one to a six. Another polygon dice has been eliminated. Three to one. Another one. All right, the six sided is like making a little bit of a comeback. Five to ten. Never mind. All right, seven to four. Yeah, not looking good. Well, the four side, it's maybe one to one, both eliminated. Yay! They're very glad because any elimination is a good one at this point. One to two. Yeah, it's not looking too good for the four side. So far, we've had four of the four side eliminated, which is to be expected. Two to four. <laughs> All right, 11 to 1. 3 to 2, an 8-sider has been taken out. 3 to 1. 3 to 6. This, is, this seems unfair. 4 to 2. 5 to 1. Oh, man. This is just sad at this point. Three to one. It's like the blue dice aren't even trying anymore. Three to one. Well, there's one. Taken out of the situation. Three to three. Both eliminated. We have some pretty tough rules here in this competition. One to two. I'm sorry, but if you're going to be rolling that poorly. Two to seven. Not even close. Six to five. Oh, they took out a ten sider. That's good. Three to four. Oh, they took out another six sider. Three to one and another six sider. Oh, they're feeling a little bit more cocky here. Six to five. They took out a twelve sider. Oh, oh. Can they take out a twenty? This die is going to be re rerolled because of bad die. Okay, fourteen to six. That wasn't even close. One to four. Oh, man. 
And finally, six to two, another eight siders out. All right, so the blue team had two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 victories in that matchup. Of course, there's still a horde of them left. And over here we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21 victories. Of course, very few four Senate dice left. It's not looking good. I mean, look at the blue casualties. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Three to one. A 12 sider out in the first round. Five to one. An eight sider out. Oh, are the six sided? Two to five. Never mind. They just got whooped up by their uh, six sided. Five to five. Both eliminated. Yeah. They're always glad when someone from the other team's eliminated. Eight to four. All right, the 20 side, it's now five to one. Definitely going to be crushing. The 20 side, it's all coming out. Four to two. Man, the 20 side, are rolling terribly, and yet still 19 to two. Well, that wasn't rolling terribly. That was a total destruction. Six to two, a 20 side, it has been eliminated. This blue one. Oh. Three to one, another 20 side, it has been eliminated. Oh, now we're starting. Oh, 11 to 5. Okay. And the last 20 sided die here we got 16 to 1. All right. There are still four 20 sided in the game. Let's go now through the 12s. 11 to 5. 5 to 1. Another 12 has been eliminated. 6 to 1. Okay, so there are still two 12s in the game. Let's go now to the 10s, of which there are four left. Five to four, that's one 10 that's been eliminated. Four to two, another 10 has been eliminated. Four to one, all right, one 10 stays in the match. Six to five, Woo! another 10 stays in the match. So we have uh, three 10s, so we have Four 20s, two 12s, three 10s, and a six. Let's see how the four, does the four-sided stay in the match? He does, he takes out another six-sided die. Now let's see if the two eight-sided stay in. No, one eight-sided has been eliminated. And the other eight-sided, three to seven, stays in. All right, that time the six-sided won eight times and the other team won Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve times. The problem is, is that we're starting to run out of dice. This is still a pretty close match here. So we're going to start from the low to high this time. Let's see if the four sided stays in. Four to three. Nope. The four sided has been finally eliminated. No more four sided. The remaining six sided die. Three to two. Nope. All right. The weak ones have been called. We can still make it eight against a six-sided, four to two. The eight-sided is still in the mix. Now for the ten-sided. Three to one, one ten-sided has been eliminated. This is a really bad round for the big polyhedral dice. Ten to two. Do we have any more tens? Yep, one more. Two to three, another ten-sided has been eliminated. Oh, the power of blue. All right, let's do the 12 side it's here. Four to three, whoo! All right, next 12 side it. 12 to three. Next, oh, now we're at the 20s, here we go, four 20s. Three to six, one 20 has been eliminated. Next one, six to 20. Also, this guy has been murdered. When you ever roll 20, that's what happens. All right, um, seven to two. And six to two. All right. The polyhedrons are a little, by little, I mean a lot worried. Because that time they won seven times and the blue dice won five times. There are now four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 dice to seven. This, this is interesting, but they're down to their best dice. So we'll see what happens. We're going to start with the eight sided. Eight to one. That's one elimination. Now to the sold 10 side it left. Five to four, it has been eliminated. Oh no, 12 to six. 
a 1 to a 3. Another 12, there's only one 12 sided left. 6 to 3, it eliminates that one. We're now down to the 320s. They're hoping for three quick eliminations. 18 to 5, got it. 13 to 6, got it. 12 to 3, got it. All right, there's now 5 to 2, to 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Whew, 5 on 14. We're going to start with the 8 sided. Here we go. 3 to 2. The 8 is gone. They're down to 4 dice. We got a little nervous here. 8 to 1. Nope, 12 sided stayed in. Now for the 320s. Will they get 3 more wins? 18 to 3, yes. 10 to 4, yes. 3 to 1, no. One of the 20s has been gone. Oh, they're down to 3. All right, let's see. 1 to 2, oh no, the last 12 is gone. Can these two 20s take out 10 sixes? It's time to find out. 3 to 1. <laughs> 10 to 3. This is just, we're just going to keep going. 4 to 1. Oh no! We're now down to 8 sixes versus a single 20. Here we go. 5 to 5. Both eliminate it. But wait! The judges just conferred. That's not allowed. That's just a tie. We roll until the tie is gone. You cannot lose on a tie. All right, 13 to 1. Two for the six sider and a one for the 20. The power of the mass six sided die. The blue team wins. <laughs> Do 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 do